Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. Uh, Stagecoach, yeah, that's what we're here to talk about. Everything about Stagecoach Music Festival from what did it cost to some items that you might want to bring, some items that you might not want to bring to the festival. And uh, stick with me and we'll break it down. We'll go all over everything. So if you're a new RVer or somebody who's always thought about going to Stagecoach, then uh, stick around and we'll go ahead and we'll talk about all of it. First of all, let's talk about, let's go from start to finish. Okay, we went out there Thursday through Monday out at the Stagecoach. So how to prepare for Stagecoach, which is kind of a lot actually. Uh, first of all, you got to get your tickets as we all know this. And uh, honestly, we had the saloon tickets. We bought them off a friend for 800 bucks a piece. I would just get general admission, you know. I mean, they had a nice T-Mobile stand there, uh, people in the back. and uh, But that's up to you as far as what wristband that you want to get. But uh, one thing I will tell you, though, is you purchase your RV spot, which right off the bat is going to be about, especially if you go Lot 8, you're looking at about $2,000 just for the RV spot. Now, just because you got an RV spot, you get they'll ship you the wristbands you get. Uh, the RV spot plus eight wristbands that you can give to your friends. You can sell them or whatever you want to do with them. But that doesn't get you into the venue. So you have to have the RV wristband and your uh, venue wristband, whether it's general admission or whatever. Because uh, once you go through security, they actually scan those right there when you're at the RV. So that was something um, that uh, you need to know. You need both of them, unfortunately. So uh, get those, first of all, whether it's lot 10. I think lot 10 is like a dry. And then uh, lot 8, that's where we were, kind of right up there, not far from the main gate where you could walk in. And uh, that was actually uh, pretty cool. We were in 803 uh, row up there towards the front. And uh, But again, 803, you only get... Um, power 30 amp or 50 amp no water hookup and there's no uh, sewer hookup so what you want to do is uh top off your tanks empty your black tank empty your gray tanks but top off your water tanks before you go because the reason why i'm telling you this is because it's a dollar a gallon if you need water there so you have to pay for water if you run out in your rv dollar a gallon so uh, we have a hundred gallon tank of water. We filled it up. We had uh, we have sixty gallons of gray tank and forty gallons of um, black tank, and uh, we actually made it through. You know, we uh, conserved water, you know, such as using paper plates and only turn on the water just real quick to rinse off, you know, something. Uh, so we actually made it out without having to get water or dump any of our other tanks. Now, the biggest stress of it was, was more our black tank. And not just because my wife and myself, but because we had all these friends that want to come in. And when you get those wristbands, everyone's going to, hey, you know, come out and get me in. And then they come in the RV. Like we had 12 people in our 40 foot Monaco. And of course, they're all using the bathroom. And uh, that's where it's going to fill up your black tank. Uh, Actually, the second day, I just turned off, turned off the water pump because you don't know people going in there, how long they're stepping down the pedal. And that's just flushing all that water down in your tank, where if they're just going number one, which I hope they're not taking any steamers in there. But, you know, you never know. I guess you would find out with the pump off because it's not going to flush it down. But we didn't have any of that problem. But it did save on the water because if you're just peeing in there, no big deal. You just press on the pedal and it goes down. So um, that's something to really consider is conserving your water and your black and gray tanks. Now they do have waste that comes around. I believe it was $60 if you did want to drain your waste tank or your, and your gray tank. I believe it was 60 bucks. Um, one of our guys, we had a big horseshoe that we were in. Uh, he had to get water and, uh, but it was a dollar a gallon is what, and uh, 
it's just crazy because people get swimming pools and there's one huge swimming pool where $4,500 to fill it. Uh, now, a lot of people fly in and you bring chairs and you bring all this stuff. Uh, and the good thing of it is, is people just leave it behind. And that's not a bad thing. What they're doing is they leave it behind because they can't take it with them on the plane. And all that gets donated, by the way, to churches, charity, everything. They go around, they pick up the swimming pools. There's hundreds and hundreds of sleeping bags and chairs and everything that gets uh, donated, which is a good cause, actually. Um, now, prepping what I did now, like I said, I have a 40-foot Class A diesel pusher. And down underneath, down below, I took out everything. I mean, we're talking, all I had was water and um, some chairs down there. Because when you go through security, uh, they have a dog that went around and sniffed, I think mainly for gunpowder and for weapons. Sometimes they'll go just on the outside or sometimes they'll come inside with the dog. Um, but they definitely have you open up every single compartment down there. And there are those people. So if you have, if you're dry camping, uh, don't bring a, a portable generator because they'll confiscate it right there on site. Can't have them. Now, if you have a class A or a, a gas or diesel or whatever, you have a built in from the manufacturer generator. That's okay. You can totally have that on board. Uh, but there's a lot of items, especially like no glass, uh, no flashlights over five and a half inches long. And even if uh, I did a video of um, stagecoach for the three days, I mean, you know, there's all these people around. It's kind of hard to film all the time. And you got all these people wanting to go here, going there, concerts. And the other thing is, too, is you can't bring selfie sticks in either. And uh, you can't bring in professional cameras that have detachable lenses either. So um, I kind of left my more expensive cameras at home because I didn't want to deal with it in the crowds and risk losing it. So. I just used my cell phone to do some video and posted a video of um, us walking around the venue and concerts and such. So just keep that in mind as well, that um, there's no really professional video cameras allowed or videoing because they might they might take them from you. So I, most of the people I saw that I believe you can bring a GoPro, which unfortunately I don't have, but I'm going to get one because uh, probably next year I'll, I'll just put a, grow, a GoPro on me. And just walk around with it on. I believe that's okay. But uh, anything else, detachable cameras, selfie sticks, all that stuff, they won't let you take it in the, the main venue or even in the RV park. And if they see it when they come look through your cabinets, they'll take it. So I just left all that home and did my filming with a cell phone. So sorry if it wasn't that great of footage, but, you know, got to do what you got to do. Uh, the other thing, too, on cost. So basically, you know... Uh, your fuel now, it's, this might be different from what other people, what, what it costs them. It might cost them a lot less or a lot more, probably a lot more, because we don't live very far from Coachella mu Music Festival or Stagecoach Music Festival. So fortunately for us, I just put $100 uh, dollars of diesel fuel in, in, in the RV, and I'm glad I did. And here's the other thing, too, that happened this year. Uh, this year was the first year that they did um, reserved RV parking. So we're like, oh, cool, you know, well, we'll just, um, now we don't have to get up at five in the morning to beat that long line, you know, because we have a reserved spot, which is kind of neat. So we thought, you know what, let's leave around 10, 11 o'clock then. Yeah, nightmare. Doesn't matter what time you leave, five in the morning, 10 o'clock or one o'clock, the line was literally, it took us like, I don't know, two and a half, three hours to just get to security. So my advice would be get there. I think next year, well, that's what we're going to do is just get there at 5 a.m. Whether you have a reserve spot or not, it's not going to make one bit of difference. It's the same outcome, which um, we kind of learned our lesson on that one. So I believe next year we'll be going at uh, probably right when they open gates at five in the morning to get there, to get set up. Uh, now, uh, what else cost wise? So you have the 2000 for the spot, which is a 20 by 50 spot is what your spot is. Um, so it can fit most, you know, up to like 45 foot um, RV. Uh, now, if you have a fifth wheel with a and it goes over that, you'll have to park your vehicle in another spot because uh, they're only 20 by 50. Uh, so 
Uh, you have the 2000 right up front. You have your general admission or whatever band wristband you want to get. And then you have your fuel. Uh, then you have your alcohol, food. Um, bring ice. Uh, here's another Here's another tip for you. Uh, we have a one of those coolers that I got on Amazon. And what it is, is it's one of those coolers that you can keep one side uh, refrigerated and the other side f uh, frozen if you want. Or you can keep it both the same temperature. Well, that worked great for us because I plugged it in down below in our RV in the compartment. And I put all my beer in there. And so you don't have to worry about keeping ice on your beer to keep it cold through the whole weekend. So we actually had ice left over. Mainly the ice was for mixing drinks. So um, the other thing too is you have to get creative uh, at Stagecoach um, because uh, you're only allowed, uh, when you go on their website, you'll see like one case of beer, uh, one box of wine, one um, bottle of vodka, one of the two, uh, and no glass. So keep that in mind because if you just leave it out or whatever and have all this stuff laying there they're going to take it you know because they do check your compartments they do check down below they open all of them and they look in there and they see what you have uh now from what i saw they weren't going through every single you know detail of inside your rv i mean it'd take them it, the line would take forever if they did that so you know just be kind of wise about where you put it or if you do take some and you hide it or whatever you do um, think about that because alcohol, when you go in the venue, like a double, I think a double vodka or something was like, oh, it was like uh 48 bucks or something, you know, it's expensive. And I heard also saw too, a pizza was like $65. So, um, people are getting creative, you know, to kind of try to save on the cost once you get in there. So just think about that as well. Um, I would say overall, like the cost. So I w oh, let me break it down. So I did the I did the the RV spot. If you're in lot eight, you're looking at two thousand dollars just for the lot. Okay. And then you have your food and everything, uh, water, which might cost us, uh, you know, maybe five hundred bucks, six hundred bucks. Then we paid two tickets at eight hundred piece, so that's sixteen hundred. So, um, and then if you did buy a cocktail inside, which you probably will, you know, but most of you. In the RV park, we drank in the RV park and kind of pre-gamed and then went in to the uh, event. So um, you're probably looking at at least four to five thousand dollars for the weekend. Now you get to go there. Now some people might comment, and please do tell me what what it costs you to go to Stagecoach because I'm sure some of you had to drive from Arizona or across the nation and it you know just to get here. But for us, we were. 20 minutes away or half hour away. So it was probably less on fuel and other people probably stayed once they got out of the, uh, cause they kick you out at 10 o'clock the next morning, by the way. So if you're up Sunday night, it's an early morning getting out of there. And, um, uh, a little hint there too is, um, leave it, uh, if you can at eight o'clock in the morning, cause, uh, that's when we left and there's hardly anyone leaving at that point. And we got out of there with, with no traffic at all. So, um, uh, that's a little bit of a, a little tip for you if you're coming and, uh, also, um, uh, yeah, please let me know what, uh, cost you if you did go to Stagecoach this year. And if you're new or you're a seasoned RV and you're looking to go to Stagecoach, these are some of the things that you have to consider. Like I said, uh, comments of what, you know, your ideas, like, and subscribe. Uh, follow the channel. We're new. We're about five months old, I believe our channel is. So, um, but uh, we'll see you on the next video. Have a good day.